I'm Alex Michelson. This week, the issue is the district that could determine control of the House. On the left, Democratic State Senator Dave Min is here to make his case to replace Democrat Katie Porter in the House. On the right, Scott Baugh argues why that district should elect a Republican instead. Plus, the governor's push to regulate oil companies and more with an all-star panel on stage in front of an audience this week in Sacramento. Broadcasting across California, you're watching The Issue Is. The next Speaker of the House will likely be picked by California voters. Morning, California Democrats. If Democrats win, Hakeem Jeffries becomes Speaker. California is going to be an incredibly important state. It always has been. On that issue, the chair of the Republican National Committee, Mike Watley, agrees. We do not have a Republican majority in Congress today uh, without these seats in California. Are there any seats in particular you're especially keeping an eye on? You know, look, I think that uh, we have one uh, opportunity to be able to pick up a seat in Katie Porter's uh, district. Are there particular districts, one or two districts in California you're especially focused on? Of course, we have to make sure that we hold the seat that is going to be vacated by Katie Porter. Uh, in Orange County. That district is California's 47th, which includes Irvine, Huntington Beach, Costa Mesa, and Newport Beach. Orange is the new blue. In 2018, Democrat Katie Porter flipped this traditionally Republican seat with some help from Gavin Newsom and then Senator Kamala Harris. What does a majority Democratic Washington look like? What does that mean for voters as compared to what they have now? It will be a better look. No money for prescription drugs, nothing. Porter would become an often viral star in the House. California needs a warrior in Washington. When she decided to run for the U.S. Senate this year, she had to give up her House seat. And how about you? How are you doing today? In 2022, Porter's opponent was businessman Scott Baugh, the former top Republican in the Assembly. At the time, Baugh was badly outspent. Porter raising $28.5 million to Baugh's $3 million. Still... Baugh kept the race close, finishing less than four points back. Scott Baugh, good to see you. Baugh is running again this year. He's facing off against Porter's hand-picked successor, longtime state senator Dave Min. A recent USC Dornsife poll shows Baugh ahead by three, but that's within the margin of error, so this race could literally be tied. So in our next segment, we'll be joined on set by Republican Scott Baugh, but joining me now is Democratic State Senator Dave Min. Senator, welcome to The Issue Is. Thanks so much for having me, Alex. Good to see you. We wanted this to be a debate between the two of you. Yeah. You said yes. Baugh initially was thinking about it and then said no, which is too bad. I, I think given the campaign he's running, uh, a campaign that's really built on a lot of deceptions about his own record and statements as well as about my record. I understand why he doesn't want to be here face to face with me. All right. Well, let, let's talk about this race, which we're sort of framing as the potential deciding race. So what is the biggest difference, in your view, between a Democratic House and a Republican House? I mean, the biggest difference is that a Democratic House might actually get something done. Uh, this particular Republican House uh, is going to be famous or infamous for being uh, the worst Congress in the history of Congresses. And, and we, it's a low bar here, uh, but they have done nothing. other. They've spent much more time focusing on Hunter Biden's genitalia than they have focusing on the problems that people are actually facing, rising costs. Uh, they refuse to bat, pass a bipartisan border pill. Uh, they've refused to address the real problems that Americans' Orange County families are facing. Uh, we also know that if they had control of the Senate and presidency, uh, they would push an extreme agenda that was outlined in Project 2025, including uh, a total ban on abortion starting at conception, uh, a lot of extreme aspects of that agenda. Well, we don't know that they would pass that agenda in Project 2025. Donald Trump says that he doesn't agree with much of that, and many of the people running sure. are not. But to your point, though, you're going to get something done. What's the number one thing you get done in a Democrat? Congress. Well, for me, I want to set expectations real. Like uh, my my role as one of 435 is to elect Hakeem Jeffries. Uh, and I think it's to keep going forward on addressing the border crisis, uh, to try to uh, pass uh, more inflation reduction economic policies, policies that work for working families, uh, to try to shore up abortion rights, to try to deal with some of the major challenges we're facing in this country right now, including uh, around gun safety and the climate crisis that is uh, causing ripples around the country right now. All right, let's go through some of those. Uh, yeah, let's sure. start with the issue of of abortion. Mm -hmm. uh, are there any restrictions on abortion that you would support? Uh, sure. I think the restrictions that Roe v. Wade imposed, I think, you know, uh, sliding scale, including um, uh, much stricter scrutiny uh, and states being allowed to regulate more in the third trimester. Uh, these all make a lot of sense to me. And I think uh, what I'd like to see happen is us restore 
to the default status quo we had under Roe v. Wade, I think the codification of Roe v. Wade is something I would certainly support should I be elected to Congress. Okay. Um, on the issue of the border, mm -hmm. uh, we had this bipartisan bill mm -hmm. uh, that would have made major changes at the board. Would you have voted for that? Oh, absolutely. And it was a, a shame that Republicans held that up because it was a bipartisan bill. Uh, the Border Patrol agents themselves pushed forward. It would have added uh, hundreds or thousands of new border agents uh, provided billions for technology to stop human trafficking, fentanyl trafficking. Uh, we have a crisis at our border right now, and we ought to be st doing everything we can to stop it. But Democrats had full control of Washington at mm -hmm. the beginning of the yeah. Biden administration, and they didn't pass it. They didn't pass immigration reform when they had even more control during the Obama administration. Don't Democrats bear a lot of the responsibility, too? Sure. I mean, we, we have a responsibility to fix problems. Let's talk about the issue of guns. Mm -hmm. uh, you have been um, one of the legislators who has been most successful in passing restrictions, one of which was just upheld uh, by the courts this week. Mm -hmm. um, as a legislator in Congress, do you see that something that you would focus on? What sort of federal gun rules do you want to see? Uh, absolutely. We have a, a gun crisis in this country, a gun violence epidemic. Uh, and it's sad when we see the statistics that now uh, the number one killer of children in the United States of America, it's, it's not drugs, it's not traffic accidents. It's not swimming accidents, it is guns. Gun violence is a scourge in this country. It is preventable. Uh, and I think we have to start with the common sense solutions of limiting access to weapons of war, uh, having ba more robust background checks, uh, preventing people who are high propensity uh, murderers and criminals, uh, including those who have committed domestic violence, from having access to guns. Uh, Scott Boss says that you're soft on crime. Uh, he points to the fact that you supported an end of cash bail, uh, suppressing records for those who are convicted of felonies. Mm -hmm. What do you say to the allegation that you're soft on crime? Uh, it's a ridiculous talking point that if you look around the country, look around California, every Republican running against a Democrat is running on the same issue. We're all soft on crime. Uh, in this case, it just doesn't fly. That dog won't hunt. I'm uh, someone who spent my career upholding the rule of law. My very first job was law enforcement. It was prosecuting Wall Street. I have been uh, very strongly in support of police and the rule of law. And I will just note that Scott Ball has refused to condemn the events of January 6th, in which four Capitol Police officers died. I'm wearing this pin uh, because I want to stand in solidarity with police officers. I'm proud to be the only candidate in, in this race endorsed by law enforcement organizations. And there's a reason for that, because only one of us has stood with police. Only one of us has stood with law enforcement in this race, and that is not Scott Ball. Let's end with something fun. <laughs> so this is kind of fun this for me, is, uh, I gotta say. personal issues, which is what we do. Thirty seconds on the clock. Your favorite cultural uh, uh, things. First thing that comes to mind. All right, ready? Sure. Uh, what's your favorite TV show? Oh, geez, right now uh, I gotta say uh, the Game of Thrones spinoff, which I'm forgetting the name. House oh, of the Dragon. Yeah. Uh, favorite movie? Oh shoot, it's gotta be um, Zoolander. Oh, okay. Band or musician? Uh, I am listening right now to an old school band called The Wedding Present from the 80s, like Brit British punk. <laughs> What's your favorite restaurant in Orange County? Oh, shoot, there's so many to choose from. Uh, I think my family and I appreciate hot pot now that nowadays. Our kids are really into it. And who is your role model? My role model is really my mom. My mom uh, was someone who uh, grew up, uh, you know, had adversity her whole life. And uh, I only appreciate this now as an adult, but. Through her career, she was one of the leading semiconductor executives in her industry. Uh, she worked at some really uh, amazing companies and, and really hit a glass and bamboo ceiling. Uh, she must have faced a lot of discrimination uh, because she was typically the only woman, the only minority in the room at that time in the 80s and 90s. And uh, yet she never complained about it to us. Like, um, you know, we, we heard about it a little bit offhand, but uh, she was always home at 6 p.m. to make us dinner. That was a different time, of course. Uh, mm. And she is amazing. So thank you, Mom. All right. Shout out to mom. That's a great way to end. Thank you so much, Thank Senator. You. Great to Appreciate see you. It. Different view. Scott Baugh, when we come back, you're watching The Issue Is. In Congress, my first priority is solving the fentanyl epidemic. Washington divides us, but there's more that unites us. Randy was my brother. I'll try being yours as well. That's the latest ad from Republican congressional candidate Scott Baugh talking about losing his brother to fentanyl in 2020. Scott joins us now in studio. Welcome back to The Issue Is. Good, good to be with good you. Good to see you. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm sorry for the loss of your brother. Um, why was it so important for you to talk about that? Well, I, I lost my brother in 2020, and we never brought this up in the 2022 election. 
Uh, but since then, we've had hundreds of thousands of families been torn apart by fentanyl poisonings. We have uh, 120,000 deaths in 2023 from drug overdoses. This is fentanyl coming across the southern border, and it's tearing families apart. And there's a lot of pain out there, and we, we just think it needs to be addressed and stopped. And, and to that point, you say that's going to be your number one priority. What specific policy-wise are you going to do differently than Dave Min when it comes to fentanyl? Well, first of all, Dave Min believes in open borders. I don't believe in open borders. I believe in a secure border and then uh, robust immigration that's legal. Uh, but if we secure our border, you stop all this fentanyl that's coming in. That's number one. Number two, there's a, it's, a, it's called naloxone. It's a drug a reversal agent, if mm -hmm. you will that allows people to come out of this deep uh, uh, coma they go into with fentanyl. Mm -hmm. And we just need to have more education on that and more fentanyl or more naloxone distributed out into the community. Yeah, and it really is amazing how that saves lives uh, if somebody has it in the right moment. Um, so let's talk about the, the border a little bit. Sure. Um, you were not a supporter of that bipartisan border bill that came out last year. Uh, what specifically do you think you could get passed and signed if you were a member of Congress on the border? Well, specifically, um, uh, about 90 percent of it can be done with uh, administrative orders, which is why you didn't have a lot of illegal immigration when Trump was president. And then secondarily, you need funding to finish the wall. Now, I don't think you need a wall from end to end, uh, but you certainly need a wall in certain places. And again, my philosophy is a tall fence and a wide gate because we are a generous country. We allow a lot of immigration in here, but it has to be legal because the illegal immigration brings drugs. It brings a sex trafficking and it brings terrorism. Supporters of that bipartisan immigration bill last year, including Kamala Harris, say uh, that would have been tough on immigration. It would have increased border uh, funding. It would have increased uh, help to the Border Patrol. It would have increased technology to the area. What's wrong with it? That border bill allowed a million new people to come in every year. It was more of a facade to pretend you were doing something as opposed to real action that needs to be done on our border. Um, another uh, big issue in this election is abortion. Uh, the sure. Min campaign points to a quote that you gave the L.A. Times back in 1998, which is quite simply, I do not support abortion in any form. Is that your view? Can you clarify what your view is on abortion? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for that question. I am, I'm a pro-life guy. I'm personally pro-life. But my personal views on that uh, don't reflect what I, I do as a policymaker. I don't think the federal government should step in and ban abortion at all. Dave Min's running ads that are just lies about what I would do. The state of California has enshrined in our Constitution women's health and the right to choose in our Constitution. Mm -hmm. I would never let the federal government come in and overrule that and overrule the will of the people of California. On the issue of guns, we know that Dave Min has been active in the state Senate in pushing for different gun control measures, some of which just were upheld by the courts this week. Uh, what do you see as the federal role when it comes to guns? Do we need more restrictions? We've seen that uh, gun control laws, um, you, can, you can outlaw an, a, an AR um, 16 times. It's not going to change what's happening out there. Um, the gun laws are on the books. We just need to enforce them. We need to make sure we do more red flag laws and make sure that people that have mental illness or have a criminal background never get a gun. But this, this leads into the crime issue, and I hope you want to cover the crime issue a bit, because we have a proliferation of crime in this in this county, Orange County, uh, we've had a murder at Fashion Island. We had a murder at uh, uh, Huntington Beach, like two blocks from where I was having dinner the other night. And a friend of mine just got shot at, at South Coast Plaza Mall last Sunday because somebody wanted to do a smash and grab. These are out of control policies that are brought on by Dave Mann. And I can tell you all of the bills he supported, no cash bail, suppressing the felony records of people who have felonies on their records. He voted for a bill that made it more difficult for the police to investigate investigate sex crimes, including sex crimes with 11-year-old girls. Mm. So from a crime perspective in the House, what are you going to do? Well, first of all, you have to make sure you don't allow the, the, this, this progressive, I call it a regressive infection, uh, hit the, uh, the federal judiciary. And we need to make sure that, like, for example, the uh, trafficking of children uh, coming across our border is stopped. That's what you can do at the federal level. Dave Min wanted to debate you. We'd hoped to have this be a debate with the two of you on the set together. Why the decision not to debate him? Well, we've made several decisions, agreements to debate. In fact, in Orange County, not up here in L.A., but in Orange County. And Dave Min has backed out of two of them. And so uh, he says, I backed out of a debate. That's nonsense. We've never agreed to do anything here. But we did in Orange County. And just yesterday, I got a note from uh, Speak Up Newport 
that said Dave Min has agreed, uh, or he said he's not going to participate in that debate. So I'm, I'm willing to do it. He's uh, not willing. He's playing games with it. Uh, well, if, if you want to do one in Orange County, I'm happy to moderate. Oh, come on down. No, <laughs> I'd be happy to do it there. And what is the biggest single difference between a Republican House and a Democratic House? Well, a Democrat House probably would engage in impeachment of Donald Trump once a week uh, just, to, <laughs> just to obstruct everything. But the uh, Democrat House will want more spending and open borders and less enforcement of the criminal statutes. The Republican House wants to be tough on crime. They want to get our debt under control, and they want to secure our border. Uh, lastly, we do something called personal issues on this show to get to know you. These are rapid-fire questions, <laughs> cultural favorites. So let's see what, what you got. All right, ready? Uh, 30 seconds on the clock. What's your favorite TV show? TV show? Uh, I don't have a favorite. The TV issue show. is. Okay, uh, favorite movie? <laughs> Shawshank Redemption. Favorite musician or band? Um, the uh, Silver Bullet Band, Bob Seger. Uh, way to, what's your favorite way to relax? Oh, I do picture books. That's my uh, hobby. I uh, take a lot of pictures and I put them together in albums. What's the best restaurant in Orange County? Oh, I like Alessa. Okay, and who is your role model? Ronald Reagan. Ronald Reagan, why is that? Because he believes in hope and prosperity for the American people by getting government out of the way and letting the American people be free. Because when the American people are free, there's nothing they can't accomplish. All right. Well, as you just heard, there's a big difference between Dave Min and <laughs> Scott Baugh. And voters, it's up to you to figure out which one is in line with you. Thank you so much for coming here. Thank really appreciate it. Hopefully we can do something in Orange County. <laughs> uh, thanks so much. Uh, we'll be back with our panel uh, up in Sacramento, an all-star group. That's when we come back. What do you say to Californians who may be concerned seeing this, that it's going to make their lives more expensive? Well, it's just the opposite. They're ripping you off. Big oil has been ripping you off and then lying to you. Governor Newsom slamming big oil while signing a series of bills this week restricting drilling. The governor's fight over energy, one of many topics discussed during a special panel I was honored to host in Sacramento this week. I couldn't book a better panel than this. So on the Public Policy Institute of California panel, KQED's Marisa Lagos, San Francisco Chronicle's Joe Garofoli, and Politico's Melanie Mason. We discuss Kamala Harris, the first ever Democratic presidential nominee from California. The state of California is a mess. And Donald Trump, a Republican nominee with a very different view of California's leadership. We're on one path. California really is in the doghouse. You've lost a lot of congressional seniority, and you have a president who is, is, is fundamentally opposed to a lot of the policy paths that lawmakers here are taking. And on the other way, you have, side, you have the strongest ally and advocate and, and, and native daughter. She's not going to talk about it, though. She doesn't like right. to mention us very much. Well, no, let's, of let's talk about that. Because she was not the California governor, mm -hmm. and she wasn't involved in all the homelessness policy and all of the, the sort of mess that Newsom has to deal with every day, She's kind of been like this a little bit, right? Even if we weren't in this moment with the homeless crisis and a lot of the other challenges, she still would be trying to distance herself, especially from her hometown of the Bay Area. I mean, Berkeley has like the berserkly, you know, reputation. Um, Oakland has long struggled with higher crime rates. When we were at the DNC, on one night, the California Democratic Party is celebrating her as daughter of California with, you know, literally with the logos and selling t-shirts, daughter of California. The next day she gets up and, you know, she says, I grew up in, you know, the Bay. <laughs> that video the just Bay. She wouldn't like, even say the, Oakland <laughs> or, or Berkeley. Say our name, <laughs> Oakland, <laughs> Berkeley. <laughs> you take the money, but say our name. Patreon RSI. We also discussed this week's special legislative session advancing legislation pushed by Governor Newsom to regulate oil refineries. Newsom wants to require refiners to keep more reserves to prevent sudden gas price spikes if refineries go offline. But some legislators say they're confused by what the plan is. He doesn't have the votes uh, for whatever he wants to do. And lawmakers, I mean, it's rare that you see them saying, I'm confused by, I mean, right. a lot of the reports are, I'm confused I'm by what this is. Next. Gas prices obviously are a very potent political issue. They aren't so much right now, right. which yeah. is yeah. what's so yeah. gas fascinating prices about it. Are gas not, prices are actually right. like not that bad right now. I don't know if you are a member that has a tough election race. Do, not only are you being called back up to Sacramento and off of the campaign trail while you're on the ballot, but also you're having the governor remind people about gas prices in a moment where it's not actually the like top you think of the We also talk about Prop 36, the effort to amend California's Prop 47 and increase penalties for repeat thefts and drug abuse. 
A recent PPIC poll shows 71 percent of California voters support the effort, just 26 percent oppose it. Across party lines, across demographic lines, across geographic lines, people are fed up and they want an answer. And the fact that I saw a poll today and so 70 percent of people want to support it, I was wondering what state I was living in. Governor Newsom and most statewide Democrats opposed 36. If these politicians are being honest with themselves, there should be a bit of a come to Jesus moment. Of like, where, where was the disconnect? How did we drop the ball on this one? Another opponent of 36, LADA George Gascon, who helped write Prop 47 10 years ago. Gascon facing a tough re-election fight against challenger Nathan Hockman. What's been so striking me is how under the radar yeah. that race has felt. Maybe it's Prop 36 kind of sucked all the oxygen out of the room and maybe attracted that attention, but the contrast to what we saw in San Francisco when Chesa Boudin was up for recall and what that meant, and we had all of these big picture, like what does this mean for criminal justice reform? You're not seeing that conversation in LA. Maybe that race isn't that close, so it's hard to get oxygen. You think about George Gascon, uh, he, in the past, was endorsed by Gavin Newsom, by Kamala Harris, by Rob Bonta, by Adam Schiff, and none of those people... Radio silence. ...have come to his defense now. To watch our full discussion, search for 2024 Election Preview at the PPIC Notes YouTube page. And to hear extended interviews with all of our Issue Is guests, search for The Issue Is wherever you stream podcasts. We'll be right back. Next week on The Issue is an exclusive debate on the left, Brian Tyler Cohen, on the right, Tommy Lahren. We also mark the anniversary of October 7th by sitting down with Sheryl Sandberg to discuss her emotional documentary, why she says it is the most important thing she's ever done. That's during our regular show next week. We also have a bonus live edition of The Issue Is on Tuesday night. Join us immediately following the vice presidential debate around 7 o'clock. With us on the left, Attorney Bloom. On the right, KFI's John Kobalt, plus analysis from Politico's Melanie Mason. We'll be live on Fox 11 Los Angeles and streaming on YouTube and the Fox local app. Thanks for watching this week. We'll see you twice next week. <laughs>